Jeremiah chapter 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel. Israel. Saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. You got all the words. Unless you got a modern Bible that removes the words. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. That's not Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah was Judah. And it will cause them to return to the land I give to their fathers. They shall possess it. And these are the words. Now look, now look at it. Look at these four, four verses. The word of the Lord saying, speak, saying, all the words I have spoken, saith the Lord, saith the Lord, the words. God has given us the words. Not the theories, not the ideas, not the circumstances, but the words. And the Word of God is the King James 1611 Bible. Or you're not going to get the Word of God. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. So we're taking a vast great leap into the far future because this is not even the time of Jesus Christ. This is not even the time of, you know, 1940 and 40s. Israel is a split nation between Israel North and Judah South. Israel has been gone. Judah is the South. Now they come back under Judah, Ezra and Nehemiah in the time of Jesus. But there's even a time during the tribulation period that Israel is going to be known because 144,000 are of the tribes of Israel and Judah. Minus Dan and Ephraim. For thus saith the Lord. Notice how thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. We have heard a voice of trembling. Anxiety. In action of fear anxiety anxiety of action of trembling anxiety of fear itself and not of peace asking now to see whether a man does travail with a child no he doesn't and I told you that travailing is always likened to the tribulation period. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a man in travail, and all the faces are turned into paleness, sickness. So there's a time of trembling and shaking and fear, and there's no peace, and there's great pain. Coming. Well, there hasn't been. Alas, that that word should be reminding of you of a, of a book of the Bible. For that day is great. That day, a specific day. That men are likened to a woman in travail giving birth. So none is like it that day. Man going into travail. It is even the time of, there it is, Jacob's trouble. That's the tribulation period. 
That's the only place in the Bible Jacob's trouble shows up. Now, I've been teaching you for 30 chapters, and I'll teach you for the rest of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a picture of today, of America, the world, and the, and the church. And the next great event that's going to happen in the world is God is going to have the bride of Jesus called out. And sometime after that period is going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. The church does not go through it. The church is not Israel. Israel is not the church. The church has nothing to do of Jacob. Imagine someone saying the church is going through the tribulation period and it's called Jacob's trouble. If it was going to be the church, it would be the Jesus trouble. Because Jesus is the offer and finisher of our faith. Jacob is the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. But he shall be saved out of it. Say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the salvation of the tribulation that God is going to bring the Jew out. While many are going to die in it, some will be waiting in that city, that place prepared by God. Some believe it's Sela Petra. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes with the church and carries the nation of Israel over like Joshua and Moses into the promised land as Joshua did. Where even Stephen gives the detail in Acts chapter 7 and he says Jesus brought him over. There is salvation in the tribulation period. Who is going to be saved? Who is the he? Run back to Jacob's trouble. Run back to who we've been talking about. Israel. The only nation... The only Gentiles that are saved according to the scripture, Jesus said, you were a help to my brethren, you were a comfort to my brethren, you took care of my brethren, you gave medical needs to my brethren, you fed my brethren, you visit my brethren, and the nations didn't know what they were doing. And who did they do it unto the brethren? But the family of Jesus, the Jews. He came unto his own, his own received him not. Now, what is the problem with replacing theology? Well, you know, if we help Jesus' brethren, you know, we can get to the millennium. So we got to help the British Israelites. We got to help the Catholics. We got to help the Jehovah Witnesses. We got to help the Mormons. All those are the replacement theology that God is all finished with Israel. You can do whatever you want to those organizations. You ain't going to the millennium. Those are false teachings. Those that help the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they don't even know they're doing it. But the mainstay is not the Gentiles and the nation of, of Jacob's trouble is Jacob and his children. It's all about the Jew. And many nations are going to be eliminated in the tribulation period and many nations are going to be eliminated at the second coming of Jesus Christ. For it shall come to pass in that day and that's a particular statement in that day. Saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke. Now remember, Jeremiah's been wearing a yoke. Now we got a double application of scripture here. We got an application that under Ezra and Nehemiah, and then we got an application under the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll burst their bonds, locked up, chained up, tied up, handcuffed. And strangers shall no more 
serve themselves of him. Well, you can't say it's Ezra and Nehemiah. There were the Gentiles and strangers coming and trying to do business on the Sabbath. The Romans tried to deal with the Israelites in the time of Jesus. The Americans are trying to do business with Israel today for oil and, and whatever Israel has to offer, which is much. But they shall serve the Lord their God. They're not doing it now. They did it during, during the Romans' time. And they didn't really even do it after the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Yeah, they got back to God for a while. But in the millennium, and David their king. David didn't show up after Ezra and Nehemiah. David did not show up in the, the time of Jesus. David's coming back in the millennium. And David, what? How, how do you recognize all the Davids in the world when Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord? There's going to be one that is the king that was named David of a particular race of people called the Jews. And he's going to be resurrected and he's going to be the prince in the nation, in the land, under the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think there's ever a king that was in England called David or Europe. King Henry, King Louis, King... Whom I will raise up, get that resurrection. There's a second coming of David. There's a second coming of Solomon. There will be the third coming of Moses. The third coming of Elijah. The second coming of Enoch. The second coming of Noah. The second coming of Peter, James, John, Paul, and Stiley. But Jewish. David is a Jewish king of the nation of Israel. And he's coming back to life. Not Gentiles. Therefore, fear thou not. Oh, my ser servant Jacob. He's the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Later on, renamed Israel. Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O church. No. 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 Neither be dismayed, O Israel. Now, you know the book of Revelation has not been written. You know Daniel has not been written. You know the Gospel of Matthew has not been written. Now we are able to study the. Imagine after reading Daniel, reading the Gospel of Matthew written to the Jewish people, not the church, and the Book of Revelation, and God tells His people not to be dismayed, not to fear, when the Antichrist is going to be running around, chopping the heads off. Killing and drinking the blood of the Jewish people? God says, don't you worry. There's a redmint that I will protect God. For lo, I will save, there's a salvation. I will save thee from afar. They're all over the world today. In Ezra and Nehemiah, they were in just Babylon. Maybe some in Esau, Edom. Maybe some in Moab. That wasn't a bar. Thy seed from the land of their captivity. Okay, Babylon. Jacob shall return. Jacob shall return. And shall be at rest. You mean under the Roman government? You mean under the Nazi re regime? You mean under Hamas? You mean under the United Nations? 
They're not under arrest. They're under duress. But when Jesus Christ comes and brings them into that land, he is going to give them the perfect rest. That's the millennium right there. We see the tribulation period, and we see the millennium. And be quiet. You know, realize right now, any moment this week, Hamas can be launching missiles. That's not quiet. Titus 70 AD destroyed Jerusalem. That wasn't quiet. We're talking about the millennium, the perfect peace under Jesus Christ. And none shall make him afraid. <laughs> That's not today. I'm sorry. Not every time Hamas comes up and gets their weapons loaded. There are Israelis today, women and men and children, walking around in Israel carrying AK-7s with their book bags. There are Jews in America today carrying handguns concealed or unconcealed. You realize we've gone to a place in America today, Israel, Italy, Europe, and we don't know if we go to the coffee shop, a bomb's going to explode, somebody's going to pull out a gun and start shooting. Even America is in unrest. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. See the salvation? Though I make a full end of all nations. A-L-L-N-A-T-I-O-N-S. And if the, United, if the United States is in the tribulation period, God will make a full end of her. Read it. Jeremiah 30, verse 11. I ain't, ain't anti-American. I am reading to you the scripture. If England... Is in the tribulation period. God will make a I may a full end of all nations. Whether I have scattered thee, are the Jews in England? Are the Jews in America? Are the Jews in Germany? Are the Jer Jews in Africa? Are the Jews in Egypt? Have the Jews been in Russia? Have the Jews all those nations? God says, I will scatter thee. And those where I have scattered thee. I will make a full end of all nations. The stars and stripes ain't going to hang over New Jerusalem. There will be no Americans in New Jerusalem. You won't sing the Star Spangled Banner in the millennium. Don't call me anti-American. I'm a King James believing only only king james now those nations that jesus said that helped the jews comfort the jews aid the jews those will go into the millennium but you ain't going in the millennium as a nation who you are there's one nation above all nations that's the lord jesus christ yet yet yeah, get this, get this, get this, write this down. If you don't mark your Bible, mark your Bible here. Get a highlighter. Get a nice, pretty, bright highlighter. Yet will I not make a full end of the speaking to the Jews. You walk up to the Popey Dopey and say, God is not finished with the Jew. You walk up to the moron and say, God is not finished with the Jew. You walk to the Jehovah Witness, God is not finished with the Jews. You walk up to those that, you know, God's all finished with the Jews, God. You walk to them and say, I will, I, where am I? I will not make a full end of the speaking to Israel. You know what? There's no Americans in New Jerusalem. There's no Africans in New Jerusalem. There's no black lives in New Jerusalem. There's no Mexicans in New Jerusalem. There's no Chinese in New Jerusalem. There's no Russians in New Jerusalem. There's no Germans in New Jerusalem. There's no English in New Jerusalem. 
There is no Canada in New Jerusalem, but there will be Jews in the new earth forever. The nations get the, the, the heavens. And I don't think there'll be the nations called by the nations today. And then Christians, Christians, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, will be in New Jerusalem. I'm not American. I was born in America, but I'm not American. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. But I will correct thee, the Jew. I will correct thee in measure. Because they're the Jews. They have the law. They've been given the oracles of God. They're supposed to know. They had God walk and talk and live amongst them. And they crucified them. That's why there's Jacob's trouble. They rejected and killed their Messiah and never repented of it. Remember, was it the book of Numbers? There was a man that was slain, and you're supposed to gather the elders of the city and say, we don't know who did this. And we'll not leave thee all together unpunished. That's seven years. Three and a half years of great tribulation. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise, Jesus was bruised, is incurable. Thy wound is grievous. Israel in the eyes of God has a cancer. And it's a cancer that can't be cured. And it's eating away. And that cancer is called sin. It's a terminal condition. For their iniquity. There is none to please thy cause. Who in the world wants besides the Christian? Praise from the nation of Israel. I do. I support missionaries that, that go over Israel. You think anybody in the United Nations stands up for the Jew? You think anybody in America? You try to put America for the Jew when the conflict of interest is the Middle East oil and gasoline. And that gasoline, that, that oil, and that petrol goes against Israel. That thou may is bound up. That's what you do with a wound. You dress it all up, put it in a band. Thou has no healing medicine. You know how much Israel has given us the world you know all the all the scientific inventions all the great advances Israel has given us and yet they don't have a cure for their bruise and their wound and yet there is right now not for the nation but for the individual called the blood of Jesus Christ the Lamb of God that Passover lamb which take away the sin of the world. It's not going to wash them away corporately today, but it'll wash them individually. All thy lovers, everyone that they've committed adultery with, and we'll get further and further with this, Lord willing, has forgotten me. That's a sorry state in love. You you put all your love to somebody and they forget you. They seek thee not. You know, Christians do that. Oh, I'll be with you, brother. Oh, I just love you, brother. And then when it gets thick and thin and you stand up for the word of God and you get in trouble for the word of God and they're gone. For I... I, God, have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. God has become their enemy. Though God's not finished with them. Because Israel became God's enemy. 
Eye for an eye, two for a tooth. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And chastisement of a cruel one. Be uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Titus, the Antichrist, out of Hitler, and many, many, many ones. But that cruel one is pointing to one. For the multitude of thy iniquity, all have sinned come short of the glory of God, because thy sins were increased every day. Every day we don't confess our sins, our sins increase. The only way to cleanse our sins is confessing and God forgiving and cleansing us. You better confess your sins daily, momently, as much as you sin. Any moment Jesus can come. Why criest thou for thy affliction? That's what they're going to do in the tribulation period. That's what they did in Babylon. Daniel's praying. Thy, sor thy sorrow is incurable. Like the, like the bruise. For the multitude of thy iniquity. Israel's been in plenty of sorrows since Abraham. Because thy sins were increased. That's double repeated. I have done these things. On, look at look, it's God. And if Satan's done it, God has allowed. Satan to do it, Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. God is going to allow Satan the Antichrist. And Satan can do nothing more and then nothing less than what the book of Revelation says. Satan cannot destroy the entire population and wipe the nation of Israel off the map. He can't do that. He wants to, but he can't. You know, he wanted to wipe Job out. God said, okay, everything but Job. All right, even Job, but not his life. Therefore, all they that devour thee, Germany, Russia, Poland, the Antichrist, they shall be devoured. I will curse them that curse you. See that? See the curse? Has America devoured Israel? Yes, she has. For oil. England, the Belfort Declaration, has given up on Israel so Jordan can have some land. All thy adversaries, everyone against Israel, the entire works of the na of the United uh, uh, United Nations. Let me ask you a question: Has America ever devoured Israel? Let me give you one. Where is the United Nations located? It's located in New York, USA. America has devoured Israel by having the United Nations and being a member of the United Nations in their country. I will curse them that curse you. Every one of them shall go into captivity. They that spoil thee, the Jew, thee shall be spoiled. You know, Germany spoiled Israel. You know, it's a gruesome picture. And it's a gruesome study. If you were to study, I don't know how to do a Google search. I want to be... You know the Jewish people would take Jewish skin 
and make lampshades? They would knock the teeth out of the Jews to get the gold that was in their teeth. And all that prey upon thee, Germany, will I give for a prey. God ain't done dealing with Germany. Germany has not, as a nation, said, God, we sinned against you. Whatever it is, we want, we want to get right. Imagine the nations that follow the Antichrist. Imagine again America having the home of the United Nations in New York State. And in the United Nations is against Israel. If they were to make me president of the United States for one day, the very first thing I would do, kick the United Nations out. Get out of here! And take us off your rolls. And number two, anybody that hurts Israel, I am going to open up all my missile tubes of all my nuclear ballistic submarines and we're going to rain on you. Ballistic missiles. Hamas, launch another missile and you're going to be in Hamas hell. And I'll send our military over there. We'll clean the land of Hamas and we'll give it back to Israel. But you can't be right with Israel when you've got the leading assembly of nations, the United Nations, in your country that despises Israel. Don't you say God bless America when the United Nations doesn't bless Israel. For I will restore health unto thee, Israel. They're, they're badly inflicted. They're, they're incurable wounds. They had, what did Jesus do in his lifetime ministry? He healed the Jews. He healed their infirmities. He gave them eyesight to the blind. He gave them hearing to those that were deaf. He killed, healed, not killed, he healed the lepers. He didn't kill the lepers, he healed them. He took the devils out of the devils. God is going to do that to the entire nation. Again, God did, Jesus did not kill the lepers. I will heal thee of thy... I thought he said they were incurable wounds. There's a miracle here coming again. Jesus miraculously healed the people of Israel. He's going to miraculously heal them again. Glory to God. The second healing of Jesus Christ at the second advent of Jesus Christ. You know, he's not going to do it one by one. What is, you know, all the sick and they're going to be like, wow, look, all of them all healed at the same time. Saith the Lord. That's the same Lord that said, let there be light. Let there be the sun. Let there be the moon. Let there be the stars. Let Israel be healed. Because they call the outcast, capital O. I wonder what they're going to be called in the tribulation period. Gee, I wonder. Saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. All the world is seeking it now. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, his house and his dwelling. Jacob's going back and have mercy on their dwelling places, their cities, their towns, their counties, their country. And the dust city shall be built up upon her heap. Like Nehemiah and Ezra. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, like Ezra and Nehemiah, the voice of them that make merry. This is the millennium. I will multiply them, and they shall not be a few. There's going to be a lot of Jews. I would not want to be a KKK member in the millennium. I would not want to be a Nazi in the millennium. I would not want to be a Black Lives Matter in the millennium. 
I would not want to be a member of the NAACP in the millennium. I would not want to be a Roman Catholic because there's going to be a lot of Jews. And plenty of a lot of Jews. And a lot more Jews. And there's going to be a lot more Jews in the eternal life. I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. How can you say God's all finished with them? Somebody's not studying the Bible. Somebody has an other Bible. I don't even want to know what modern Bibles say about this. If your modern Bible, and I don't know, I didn't look and I don't care, but if your modern Bible messes with Jeremiah 30, you are an enemy of the children of Israel. You will get your just desserts. If you hold to a Bible that takes away the promises of Israel, you are an enemy of Israel through the Bible that you hold if it's not a King James 1611 Bible. Their children also shall be aforetime. Their congregation shall be established before me. I will punish all that oppress them. Anybody that oppresses them, God's going to punish them. You didn't take care of me. You didn't feed me. You, well, Lord, when you didn't do it under the least of my brethren, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, Lord, didn't we do miracles? Get away from me. I don't know you. And their nobles shall be of themselves. And their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near. And he shall approach to me. For who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? Ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. That's Israel. Behold the whirlwind of the Lord. Remember that in Job? The whirlwind showed up and spoke to Job. It goes forth in a fury, like a tornado would. And continually a whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Read the book of Revelation. Upon the seed of the beast. Notice the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return. Until he had done it. Fierce anger. That's the tribulation period. Upon the Antichrist. And until he had performed the intents of his heart in the latter days, he shall, you know, get the latter days. Now, where did it say? Jeremiah 30, verse 11. Let's try something. Jeremiah 30, verse 11. Let's see. ASV, I will make, I will not make a full end of thee. That's good. Um, good news. Yet will I not utterly destroy thee. It's, I'll not destroy thee, but it's not, it's not strong. Oh, the Living Bible. I will not exterminate you. That leaves a lot of options, you know. God may not exterminate him, but he ain't finished with him. Let's move ahead a little more. New Internationals. Uh, only I will not destroy you completely. Ooh, that's watered down. NIV. I will not completely destroy you. Watered down. New King James. Yet yeah, I will not make a complete end of you. Um, RSV. 
I will not make a full end. I mean, it's watered down. It's watered down. But let's try something else here. Jeremiah 30, verse 22. It's watered down. So let's see what we got here. A ASV, ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Uh, trying to get, get it's pretty much key to it, and I'm pretty more strict with that. So that's pretty much, but you don't want to mess with Israel, and I don't want to go through the whole chapter. Don't mess with the, the, the biggest thing, you know what? You don't want to mess with Israel. God said to Abraham, passed on to Jacob by his, his dad Isaac, and here we just read it here. I will curse them that curse you. I would watch even the joke. I've, I've had some Jewish friends, and they can get you angry. I don't know what it is about. They you just got to back off your anger. Love and support and try to witness to them and pray for them. They are God's people. And anybody who says God is all finished with them, that's a good time to say, i got to get me a U-Haul truck and move out from you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Please erase my phone number. 